Hey there, Nicole Steckline, technical agronomist for DeKalb and Asgro in Eastern Iowa. This warm up has got me thinking and dreaming about planting. And one of the main considerations we need to think before we get to the field is planting populations. So I wanna hit on that and the different considerations you need to think about to get to that number and maybe even get you thinking about it differently. But while it feels relatively warm out here, it's still only 20 degrees. So let's take this in the office. All right, that's better. I got my space heater running and we're nice and cozy in the office. So this is a time of year when we've got a lot of our decisions made for spring, but now we're really getting down to the details. And one of those questions tends to be, what population should I be planting these products at? I get a lot of sighs when I answer this question because I tend to answer this question with more questions because it's really more nuanced than is this hybrid a flex ear or a fixed ear? Because honestly, this day and age, there's not a whole lot of products out there that are true flex or true fixed. Um, so I wanna talk about that ear flex a little bit later on, just because there's other questions that I tend to ask even before I get to what hybrid you are planting. Probably one of the most important ones are your soil fertility levels. And this one is really important because even if you have a product out there, a hybrid out there that has really great response to population in terms of yield, if you don't have the fertility out there to feed, say 37, 38, 40,000 plants, you're going to be sacrificing yield and agronomics because you don't have enough fertility, enough groceries on the, under there to be feeding those plants. So you're gonna end up sacrificing yield and then you'll probably also be sacrificing health, um, stock quality, and then you'll probably get some sort of cannibalization. So soil fertility levels are probably one of my first things that I talk about, um, talk about um, in terms of population because it doesn't matter what hybrid out there if you don't have the groceries to feed the plants. Another one is nitrogen plan, and that also goes in hand to hand with fertility levels. But it also plays into what kind of growth habit does the root of those hybrids have? So when you think about, uh, let's say, legacy DeKalb hybrid DKC 6169, um, that one is a very penetrating root type. So you think about these root types, 6169 is one that's very well known for it. A newer product that we have is DKC 6140, 6141. It's very narrow penetrating. It has very um, vertical grow, uh, root growth type. So you have a product like that, it has a smaller sponge. So you wanna make sure that your soils are, for lack of a better word, uh, very saturated with nutrients. You wanna have those higher fertility levels. And then that's gonna be one of those hybrids where if you can put nitrogen closer to that root mass, it's not going to have to um, scavenge as far to get it because it's, it's a smaller sponge. It's not going to be touching as many soil particles. In great contrast, um, you look at a product like DKC 5834-35, that has what we refer to as a modified root type, where it's a big sponge, it tends to have more lateral root growth as well as going down into the soil. It's a big sponge, it touches a lot of soil particles, and it's going to be able to scavenge for nutrients much more efficiently than a hybrid that has a narrow penetrating root type, such as a 6169 or a 6140. So soil fertility levels and nitrogen plants are my number one concern when talking about populations because it all comes down to can you feed that many plants to be able to optimize yield and then optimize standability and stock integrity. Something else that's not quite as much science is your comfort level. If you're a guy who's been planting 32,000 plants per acre for the last 20 years, to say that you're gonna take my recommendation and plant 37, 38, 39,000, um, probably not going to happen. So sometimes it just takes a couple of years of experimentation or just nudging yourself up on a couple of products, a couple of hybrids. Sometimes that's what it takes. So what's your comfort level as a grower is probably also going to play into this equation. And now we get into the science, into the data of planting populations. 
So, you know, everybody wants to think about, um, is it a flex ear, is it a fixed ear? Like I said before, there's very few products on the market anymore that are just one or the other. Um, also, there's different ways in which a hybrid can flex. You have to think about a uh, number of rows around, uh, length of the length of the ear as well as depth of the kernel. So there's some hybrids that will, uh, another example, DKC 583435, that is a product that will tend to always have some nose back at the tip of that, um, tip of that ear because it's one of those hybrids that plans for the worst, um, plans for the best, <laughs> sorry, that plans for the best and really sets a lot of length in that ear. And then depending on the conditions of the season during grain fill, um, it can take advantage of very good grain fill conditions um, and continue to fill out that ear, or it's gonna nose back a little bit, you know, if it's, if it's hurting for water or nutrients or anything else. Um, other products such as 598182, that thing is not real impressive in terms of number of kernels around, length of ear, but that one is going to flex more in terms of kernel depth. So again, you have different ways that hybrids flex. So to say that it's a girthy ear or that it's not a girthy ear, you can't really tell how much flex it has just by um, if it's blocky, length, things like that. So it's going to flex in a lot of different ways. So the way that we measure the EFI, or what we call the ear flex index, is really about testing in the field. So as we start creeping those populations up, do we see a response in terms of yield? So these are graphs. These are the population graphs uh, created by those in field testing. And the EFI, the ear flex index, which says, yes, it responds to population or may maybe it doesn't respond as well, is determined by the slope of that curve. So you look at a product like DKC 61, 54, 55, that has a very, um, uh, that, one, that slope is closer to vertical. So that is a hybrid that in terms of yield alone, response to population. You look below that a product such as DKC 5474, that line is much is much closer to flat, which is going to say that you don't need as many plants per acre to capitalize on that to, on that hybrid. So it has very good ear flex. So this really is when everybody thinks about uh, population in terms of yield only. And that's what we have the data for. Now it's the time of the program where I challenge you to think a little bit differently. So we talked about ear flex and we talked about a hybrid's response to population in terms of yield. But what about a hybrid's response to population in terms of physiological growth pattern and growth habit? Think back a couple of years before we had all these fancy shutoffs and everything and we had overlap. Now think about what those plants and the overlap looked at looked like. Those areas basically had twice the amount of population. Those plants were tall, they were spindly, they had these little tiny ears on them. They looked nothing like the plants in the rest of the field even though they were genetically exactly the same. So the only thing that changed was the environment in which we created for them based on the number of plants that were there. So it changed its growth pattern because of the population that was sitting in there. And that's going to happen in our hybrids in the field as well. So some plants are like, hey buddy, I don't care if I've got all these friends here. I'm gonna continue to have this huge root mass. My stock diameter isn't going to change that much. Go ahead and put me out there at 38 to 40,000. I'm not going to change that much because I like my buddies, I like my friends. A good example of that is DKC 58, 34, 35. DKC 59, 81, 82, those are hybrids that will continue to grow fairly similarly even as we start to increase some of those populations. They will continue, they don't, uh, they don't get quite as claustrophobic. On the other hand, there are some other hybrids that, you know, they're, they're like pigs in a confinement building. If you squeeze, well, not even a confinement building, just livestock in general. You squeeze too many of them in there in a small space, there's you know, there's less area at the feed bunk. Um, they can't get as many nutrients. They don't like to be shoved in together. They're gonna sacrifice some growth rate and they're gonna sacrifice some yield if you smash them in there too far. There's some hybrids that they don't wanna be claustrophobic. So if we can space them out a little bit more, 
with uh, with some lower populations. When I say lower populations, in most cases I'm talking 32, 33, 34. If we can keep them down in that range, it allows those roots to go ahead and grow out. They've got the space they crave. That stock diameter is going to stay uh, bigger around, and then they don't have to compete quite as much for nutrients. So really, the goal is to get to a place we, where we are maximizing that hybrid's response to population in terms of yield while not getting too far that we're sacrificing agronomics such as root growth mass as well as stock diameter. So I hope I've given you plenty to chew on between now and planting. Uh, for this or other information, feel free to reach out to your DeKalb and Asgro dealer. You can also access this information in the link that I'm putting below where you can go and enter the product that you're planting as well as your yield goal and it will generate for you uh, the, the uh, response to population curve as well as what your optimum planting rate would be in that scenario. We also have tools available in Climate Field View which help you create uh, prescription planting population maps. And for anything else, as always, feel free to call text or email.